is Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. Sanders is back. So the last video I did on Sanders, I was making a point um, based upon his response to Trump's attack on Syria. Now, most of the people, for the most part, agree to some degree. I mean, I'm taking a thumbs up as an agreement. But there was a screaming nine <laughs> that was very strong in disagreement. Um, come on, you really can't see my perspective on this. Like, ultimately, a reality show host took it upon himself to strike a country illegally. He did this on a pretense of a chemical strike. A chemical strike that he didn't wait to see what took place at all. He didn't wait for the results. And in addition to not waiting for the results, whether the results turned out that the government did it or not, was irrelevant. He had no congressional justification to do it. He had no international justification to do it. Or authorization to do it. How's the president just randomly striking another country without any legal justification for doing it? That's an amazing thing. What power is the president working under at that point? Now, Sanders has been in Congress for God knows how long. He certainly, he knows that what the president was doing was grossly illegal. It was grossly illegal. Regardless of what Bashar al-Assad was doing, it didn't matter. That's their business. We have too much blood on our hands to go outside the country and attacking other people. We have no grounds. We have absolutely no grounds. And again, he didn't even wait for the evidence. Now, you tell me. Sanders is a very bright man. I believe he is an extremely bright man. He looks at that situation. What do you think his response should be? Be honest. What do you think his response should be? This is an illegal act. The president has no justification whatsoever to attack this country and he needs to come to Congress to get our approval to do such a thing. Look, you can talk bad about Assad if you want. Have at it. But your statement should have that in it somewhere. This is an illegal act. The president should come to Congress. Period. He had no justification to do that. It is illegal by international and our local laws. That's not what that statement read. That's not what that statement read at all. That statement was attacked aside, which, okay, that's just politics. Fair enough. But at no point did he say what the president did was illegal. At no point did the standard that he set it that literally related to our other presidents. But all of a sudden, this standard somehow is supposed to justify getting this guy out of office. Because you can't have it both ways. If Sanders is making this case, he's making a statement about the strike. And in that statement, he's attacking Bashar al-Assad. But at no point does he condemn Trump's actions. It makes it sound like the most honest senator in Washington is okay with what took place. That's what it looks like. So you may disagree with me on that, but that's what that looks like to me when I look at it. Um, that said, he's singing a different tune on this one. Um, he's essentially condemning the behavior, which is good. That's good. Look, this is going to be maddening for me to watch. Um, these guys exist in a bubble that I don't exist in. It's like they have this narrative and I can never quite tell if they actually believe it or if it's something they're just saying. Like is it, does Chuck Todd, Mr. Oblivious, really believes the things that he's saying when he's asking certain questions? Because the questions are absolutely absurd. Like you would have to just not have any, any context or any, um, like no memory over the last eight years. It just has to be blanked out. There's no way he can ask certain questions, and yet he asks those questions with a straight face. Sanders plays in and answers those questions. That is maddening to me. That is maddening to me. It feels like they're taking certain positions or they're taking certain actions. It's almost like they're acting. They're not necessarily just having an actual conversation. It just looks weird. It looks fake to me. Um, but let's watch it. It's Sanders. So, all right. Let's see what he says. Joining me now is Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders, who has 
A little bit of a dim review on the strike against Syria. Senator Sanders joins me now from Burlington, Vermont. Welcome back, sir. Good to be with you. So uh, explain why you were against this strike. Well, Chuck, for a start, let's all recognize that in a world full of disgusting dictators, uh, Bashar Assad maybe ranks at the top. This is a guy, in order to hang on to power, has allowed 400,000 people in his own country to be killed and millions to be displaced. Our goal long term has got to work with countries around the world. We cannot do it unilaterally. We've got to work with countries around the world for a political solution to get rid of this guy and to finally bring peace and stability to this country which has been so decimated. I do not believe, to answer your question, that the president simply has the authority to launch missiles. I think he has got to come to the United States Congress. I right. think he has got to explain to us what his long-term goals are. Okay. Yeah, that's politics. That's politics. I. It, it, Sanders' pattern on this it looks like it's the same every time I've seen him do it. He would start off, he would just bash the side, like viciously bash him, and then kind of take a more conciliatory tone towards it. So it's Assad is a horrible guy. Assad is disgusting. Assad gasses on people. He's in a war. But the president does not have just blah, 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 blah. He's making this point of saying, all right, I need to make sure for political reasons I am bashing this guy. The American public has a particular view of Assad. I need to be on the side of the American public. I'm going to bash Assad. The guy's a dictator. That's the narrative. He's going with the narrative. Now, Sanders knows that Assad is a dictator, but Sanders also knows. He has to know. Mr. Oblivious, Chuck Todd, also has to know that we were sending rebels into that country to destabilize that country. Meaning that, yes, 400,000 people might have died, but no, it wasn't him just randomly mowing down his own people. Context matters. Context matters heavily. But that's not what you're getting. You're getting him just bashing a guy, which is, again, it's fine. It's politics. It's He's associating himself with the American public. The American public hates this guy's guts, so Sanders is going to bash that guy to make him look favorable. It's politics. It's image. He eventually gets to the, yes, now, now that I've properly bashed him and I've properly chastised him for being a horrible guy, the president does not have justification to make that strike. It's politics. It's politics. He's playing the game. I, I, look, I don't have to like it, but I don't live in that bubble, so it's what it is. Chuck, let me just say this. Maybe the most important vote that I have ever cast in my life as a member of Congress was against the war in Iraq. When we get sucked into a war, we do not know the unintended consequences. It is easy to get into a war than it is to get out of a war, as we have learned now over the last 15 years in the Middle East. Is there a point where humanitarian uh, a cause sort of trumps, uh, trumps that, you know, where you see the gassing of people? Is there... Chuck, how do you know it was a side? Prove to me, prove to your audience, prove to anybody with an earshot, how do you know it was Assad? How do you know? How do you know the last one was Assad? Now, here's the thing. You're making the assumption that it was Assad purely because the last one, the narrative went, came from Assad. What if that last one didn't come from Assad, Chuck? You're doing your audience a disservice, a serious disservice. There a point where America's moral authority is being challenged here, and you have to send a military message. Uh I told you, man, Mr. Oblivious. Mr. Oblivious, Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd, Mr. fucking Oblivious. America's moral authority is challenged. Bernie's, the amazing part about this, Sanders injects something into the conversation. That if you just think about it for one second, he's making a point. We've been in Iraq for all that time. Who started the Iraq war? How did the Iraq war start? One president lied us into a war that ended up killing a million people. He ejected that into the conversation. Chuck Todd, Mr. Oblivious, doesn't realize that Sanders has just indicted a U.S. president for the behavior of a U.S. president. <laughs> Mind you, 
in a concealed way, but he indicted the behavior of a U.S. president, a prior Republican president. Oblivious. Is there a time where America's moral authority should come into play and you just say have to fuck international law and just just get it done? Did you not hear about the guy that lied the country into a war and killed a million Iraqis? Completely missed that part. Where is that moral authority, Chuck? We're literally in those countries today because of that quote-unquote American moral authority. That's amazing. I hate these conversations. I absolutely hate these conversations. It's demeaning to some degree. Like, you have a country that goes around the world murdering people. Like, like, willy-nilly, and it's completely unacknowledged. These guys know it. Sanders knows it. Chuck Todd knows it. It's unacknowledged. And at no point does it stop Chuck Todd from looking into the camera with a serious face that he's probably practiced for the last 10 years. Does it challenge America's moral authority for him to gas his people that way? They didn't even wait for the evidence. They didn't even wait for the evidence. I can't believe this is the shit that's on mainstream media. I'm sorry. This is aggravating. <laughs> it's all hell to me. It's absolutely aggravating to me. I don't understand why honesty is so hard. That's all. And is Amer Americans can't be this, this childish. Like, it can't be. Like, it can't be these dandelions that can't necessarily get the reality of the situation of saying, well, yeah, we were undermining a particular government for political reasons. Yes, the other president went into a country and killed a million people. Yeah, maybe that's why this stuff persists the way it does. Because these fucking narratives just keep getting persistent. Keep going. Uh, because no one else is going to do that and nothing else will deter Assad. Do you, well, do you ever believe we, there's a moment look, look. like that? Also, this hypothetical is absolutely absurd. It, it's amazingly absurd. All countries... Doesn't matter the country. No country looks at itself as the bad guy. Countries are like people in that way. Nobody gets up in the morning and says, I am a horrible fucking person. I'm sure there's somebody out there, but those people are few and far between. And there are a lot more horrible people than the people who actually do that. The point I'm getting is, if we're going to make this thing where every country thinks it's going into other countries for humanitarian reasons, nobody says we're going to go and steal their oil. That's not said. They come up with a pretext. Chuck Todd asks him, creating this weird hypothetical. What if you need to go into a country to prevent something? Chuck Todd, is that the situation to which we find ourselves, though? The president threw a hissy fit and attacked an airfield that apparently was in operation a few hours after he attacked. What does that have to do with creating this weird scenario of a genocide being committed? and whether the United States military is going to have to get involved in it. I would imagine that if a genocide is actually being committed, the other countries are probably going to want to get involved. It's just a weird hypothetical. It's almost like a, it's a war perspective hypothetical that has very little basis in reality. There's not going to be a situation. Look, there may be a situation. I can't say it not be. Who the hell knows? But he's making this, this weird... Um, Association has no basis or association with what's taking place in reality. Like, it, it's completely this hypothetical that doesn't exist. It's just a weird question. What we are seeing in Syria is the disintegration and the destruction of an entire country. It is horrible beyond horrible. Yes, I mean, what can we say about somebody who gasses Men, women, and children in his own country. It is disgusting beyond words. And you know, the sad part about this, he's playing along. Do you think Sanders is a bright man? Do you think Sanders, do you think Bernie Sanders is a bright man? If you think and you believe that Sanders is a bright man, certainly Bernie Sanders knows that the United States was sending shadow troops into those countries to destabilize that country named Syria. The people who we are paying are, were terrorists. Understand what I'm saying? When Tulsi Gabbard came back and she had that conversation on CNN and she blew Jake Tapper's mind saying, the kids were saying, please stop sending terrorists to our countries to destabilize our country. They were trying to weaken the country so it would be easier to come up with a pretext to topple that government. Sanders knows that. 
Sanders has to know that. To play this game of, I have to bash aside more, because Chuck Todd asked me whether there was a reason for us to actually strike Bashar. It's almost like he's trying to, to, to play gotcha with him in some weird hypothetical that doesn't exist. And he feels, I guess, compelled to play along into this hypothetical. I just don't like, I don't like these games. I don't like these games. It's like, just have a conversation. Not to mention, the pretext of this game, or the, or the, the conjecture, is all wrong. They don't have any of this information. The assumption is, he gasses on people. Hey, you don't know that. He never let the test go through to figure out who the hell actually did it. B, Chuck Todd completely ignores the fact that America has no justification to do so, meaning he, we have no legal authority at all. Zero. We're functioning on our own power outside the confines of anything else. It's like we're playing Batman or something. It's insane. This is our media. And these guys are taking this pretext of, well, well, can't you think of a situation where the United States would have to go into Syria? This is amazing. I don't understand why this is the bias. But what we have got to do is be smart and figure out what is the rational solution. Is, is putting 50 missiles into Syria going to solve that problem? At the end of the day, in my view, we have got to learn about what the war, the failure of our efforts in Iraq and Afghanistan, not repeat them. That's the second time he's thrown in Bush. That's the second time. I think he's trying to make a point. I honestly do. The more I, I, I think about it, and look, I, I, this could be a bias, me wanting to give him the benefit of the doubt in this case. Um, it could be random. I'm just doubtful that it's random. I think he's trying to drop these breadcrumbs of, remember what happened in Iraq. Remember what happened in Iraq. They lied. They lied. Remember what happened in Iraq. Every time he brings up Bush, that's the context. A president lied us into a war. We've been there for 15 years. So he may not be able to say, he may not pull a Tulsi Gabbard and be that strong about it. But the information that he's dropping into this conversation, even though Chuck Todd is taking this weird perspective of, hey, you can't think of a situation where you would need to go in. Like, why is that the bias? Like, I don't understand why that's the, um, you would think that they would say, well, wait a minute. If laws matter, if we're a country of laws, if the only thing that for the most part keeps all of us um, wedded together in a way, our laws, at least from a legal framework. How is the president functioning outside of the confines of law? That just seems like that would be the natural question to ask. Not to mention, particularly if you're going to kill somebody. Right? I, I, I feel like I'm weird on this point, even though I don't know why I'm weird on this point. It's, it's, it's like, well, wait a minute. He just murdered somebody. And not just murdered somebody. He did so in an illegal manner. And the press is like, hey, can't you think of a situation where you would need to actually kill somebody? That's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. I just, it blows me away every time I see something like that. Uh, it just seems like life should matter a little bit more than that. Um, and if you're going to say we're a country of laws, we have 5% of the world's population, 25% of those people in our prisons. But the president just fired off a missile into another country and killed people in the process of doing that above the law. So, it's amazing. Understand that it will be diplomacy demanding that Russia, demanding that Iran sit down at the table with the rest of the world and get what? help us solve this We've problem. Been, they've been calling for that for, four, for three years now. There has been this, you know, the talks in Geneva. Secretary, then Secretary of State John Kerry kept going back to the table. Uh, the Russians and the Iranians don't look like they're interested in a diplomatic political solution well, look, here. This is state-run media. This is state-run media. If you've ever seen, um, if you've ever watched some of those, like, um, it's like a Chinese-run media, like state TV, in a sense, where the person comes out and gives the government's line. How could, he's parroting, literally, the line of the government, for the most part. So, 
right, uh, let me put it this way. If you notice, from the media standpoint, anything that America does, by definition, is good and is right. This country never functions in a way that's in a negative manner, meaning we always do things for the right reasons. That's the narrative. Now, even a child can look at it and say that's not true, but that is the narrative. Anytime the media talks about our country, it talks about it from the standpoint of, well, we were doing this thing for this particular reason, and it was a good reason. Any level of skepticism in that is almost scrubbed out. Now, I made this point before. It was in the New York Times that the Obama administration had been paying guerrilla forces in these regions to destabilize, essentially giving resources and funding to terrorist groups to destabilize our country. It was in the New York Times. So it's not one of those things where it was in some, you know, like Breitbart magazine thing. It was in the New York Times. It was in a gray lady. But Chuck Todd is having this conversation from the standpoint of, well, America was just trying to solve it. We were trying to solve it. We were doing our best to solve it. Syria and Russia just wouldn't come to the table. Iran, it just wouldn't come to the table. Did it have anything to do with some of the groups that you were paying to destabilize the country? It's like, come on, man. This stuff is... He has to know this. He has to. He has to. It makes me think he's lying to me. And look, maybe that's just the way media is, in a sense, where it gives this state narrative um, of events. It's just... It's just to see it in action and to know that, well, wait a minute, Chuck Todd, does Chuck Todd know that Obama was trying to destabilize a country because he wanted a regime change? Does Chuck Todd know that the document or the um, Wesley Clark came out with saying that they wanted to topple all of these different governments and just so happened those governments were the ones being toppled? Like, it's almost as if Chuck Todd has no context of anything. He just appeared in the world right there and he was given a script to read. That's what it looks like. I just hate the fact that Sanders has a plea along with Captain Oblivious. Chuck, you're right. Chuck, you're right. Look, this is an extremely complicated and difficult issue. But I can also tell you that we have been in war in Iraq and Afghanistan for 14 years. Thousands of American soldiers have died. The whole Middle East has been thrown into an uproar, a uh, massive instability. Yeah, this is subtext. This is subtext. They're doing it too much. Like, it's, it's, they're revisiting the same topic over and over again. So Chuck Todd, again, parroting the government line, Sanders making this point of, hey, we've been in Iraq for a long time. We've been in Iraq for a long time. We've lost 3,000 Americans. Now, if you notice, the most natural thing in the world would be to say, and we killed a million Iraqis. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that at all. This, this kind of backs to my point. It's almost like these guys, he knows this information. I've heard Sanders make this point of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. Why didn't you say it here? It would have been the most natural thing in the world to say. He said this weird statement of, you know, inflame the Middle East or something like that. He is trying, it's almost as if he's conjured in his mind a certain certain space that he can go. It's almost like I can go this far and if I push it too much I can, it's almost like he has a political I guess headwind or something. Like for whatever reason he's calculated out and says okay I can go this far. I can't go any further than this. I can go this far. Which means I can't say a million dead Iraqis. I can't go there. What I can say is Iraq but I can't assign blame for Iraq. I could just say Iraq. People would have to understand what I'm saying. Like, it's this thing. He's said it like four times now, just in the course of a three minute segment or three minute space. He's making a point. He's making a point. It's a good point. Uh, you know, all that I'm saying here is that we have got to be clear about what our goals are, not do it unilaterally, right. and understand also, may I say, that when we have a collapsing middle class and 28 million people without any health insurance and an infrastructure that needs a trillion dollars of repair, that maybe we don't want to throw trillions of dollars more into unending 
perpetual warfare in the Middle East. You know, in December of 2015, you called for more diplomacy, working with the Russians and said, in fact, you said, you know, look, I am more than aware of the political differences we have with Russia today, but our job is to bring together a coalition which understands that the primary function right now is to destroy ISIS, to push aside for the moment at least other differences of opinion. Now, back then, you were a proponent of, hey, we have to prioritize the ISIS situation first in Syria. Has your mind changed on that, watching what Assad's been doing? This, it's as if Chuck Todd asks questions without any level of, um, it's like Captain Oblivious. Uh, let me ask you, let's say Assad is gone. Let's say Assad lost. What happens to Syria if Assad is taken down? What happens to Syria? That's not a fair question. If you're trying to depose that strong man that's been there for God knows how long, who takes over? Who takes over? When Libya went in the toilet, who took over Libya? The point I'm making is, yes, it makes more sense to go after ISIS. Assad has been in a civil war. We've been helping fund or fuel that civil war. Let's keep it real. A, stop funding the terrorists in that particular region. I would say B, stop doing airstrikes to help those terrorists try to take that particular country. And C, lead that country to its own devices. We've done enough. We've done enough. If they can stop that war, let them stop that war. If that country gets to the point where they want to get rid of Bashar al-Assad, they would get rid of Bashar al-Assad. They don't need our help. We don't need to be in that region. That's what it boils down to. Chuck Todd, the media, they're chest thumping this thing as if war is this fucking awesome video game. It's not a video game. They're talking about getting people killed. It's terrifying that that's the narrative that they run with. Instinctively. You would have thought, after the travesty, that just utter embarrassment of Iraq that the media, for the most part, helped propagate. That they would be a little bit more cautious about just coming out with this type of narrative, this war talk, right off the bat. If nothing else, they don't give a shit about the million Iraqis that died. There were 3,000 Americans that also died in that war. Why is Captain Oblivious here so eager to get us into another one? That's the question. All these guys, even Fareed Zakaria, he was on there um, worshiping um, at the military strike, thinking this was awesome idea. Brian Williams looked like he was trying to have sex with a missile. It was, these people were gross. These people are absolutely gross. We're literally talking about a situation where they're trying to dismember human beings using bombs and weapons and technology. That's what we're talking about. The hard one that these guys have for it is unnatural. And it's somewhat of a mental illness. And the idea that that's the narrative that they go with is terrifying. It's terrifying. It explains a lot. Assad has been doing what he has been doing for years. Chuck, 400,000 people in Syria have been killed. Men, women, and children. Over 5 million people have been displaced. This is a horror show. Yes, we have got to destroy ISIS. Yes, we eventually have got to get rid of Assad. But we cannot, in my view, do it unilaterally. That will not work. What do you do to the Russians, though, if they're not going to uh, be at all interested in a political solution? What, how well, do you I encourage you, them you, to the table? I think you may want to make them an offer they can't refuse. And that means tightening the screws on them, dealing with sanctions, uh, telling them that we need their help. They have got to come to the table and not maintain this horrific dictator. None of this. What? Come on, man. You can love Sanders, but that is a, that's a horrible answer. That's a horrible answer. You're going to put the screws on him, Bernie? We're going to put the screws on him. We're going to put sanctions on Russia because they don't come to the bargaining table to talk with us. Is that what you're saying? Is that what we use sanctions for? To essentially <laughs> to blackmail other countries into coming to the bargaining table? A bargaining table that we ourselves don't need to be at, have nothing to do with, not even on the same continent with. That's absurd. I, 
I hate that he has to play this game. This game is absurd. I, I can't... The American people aren't children. If you gave them a little bit more information, I think they can deal with that information. And at the very least, it would help them to make better decisions about what goes on in the outside world. No wonder these people are chest thumping about war. I, I would see people's um, pages and they would be like, yeah, good job, Trump. Good job, what? He's being, he's functioning illegally. And you look at this and it kind of makes sense. The pretext of everything is we have to be tough guys and we need to be in everybody's business. That's the pretext. That's the framing of the questions. Even when they're talking to Sanders, everything is framed in this way of, you could think of a reason why we'd have to attack them, right? What if Russia doesn't want to talk with us? I mean, what, what would we do to Russia? Why are you being this passive aggressive? Why are you being this lonely? It's like a like an angry teenager. It's fucking weird and ridiculous and kind of pathetic. Yeah, I'm glad I don't watch this often. This is painful. This is absolutely painful. Stuff is easy, Chuck. And any position that anybody takes can be criticized. But at the end of the day, I think getting the United States involved in perpetual warfare, mm -hmm. sending troops into uh, Syria will just continue the process of money going down a rat hole. I think ultimately the solution has got to be political. All and right. by the way, one yes, other sir. thing that I concern La concerns many people. Yes, sir. All right, is Trump says one thing and he ends up doing another thing. Let's get some consistency from this president. Let's get the Congress involved in this debate. All right. Yeah, good closing. Good closing. And he's right. Trump is massively inconsistent. That's, and that's just problematic in general. Um, it's like a petulant child. It, it, and I full well believe that the reason why he struck Syria had nothing to do with that chemical strike. I don't believe that at all. I think it had more to do with he was trying to distance himself from Russia. I think he took a political calculation for himself and figured they're not going to start a war over this. I bet you I can get away with this. I think it may, that's probably as far as it went. I have no evidence of it, so take it for what it's worth. But it just doesn't logically make sense. The contradictions don't make sense. Trump murders people casually. He's already killed hundreds, including beautiful babies. But one supposed to believe that a chemical strike that kills 70? Yeah, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So, all right, guys, if you enjoy the content, feel free to comment, share, like, and, of course, support on Patreon. Thanks, guys.